afternoon to all of us. So by the way, my name is Marbolo Sinjerines. And for this afternoon's topic, we're going to talk about the essential elements of planning sound classroom summative assessment. But beforehand, let's know first or define what is this summative assessment. So summative assessment are primarily used to document students' performance. It is also used to monitor, to record the student's proficiency, um, to provide student grades, and to report parents. It is also uh, used for conferring of honors, uh, establishing of a record for their performance. So, as to summarize what are being mentioned, summative assessment is a kind of assessment that is best for monitoring, documenting, and recording students' performance and what the student uh, learned or what he or she can do. It is also uh, a kind of assessment that is best to know on how the teachers or how effective the teachers are in terms of teaching to their students. Examples of these summative assessments are the unit test, the semester test, the chapter test, the common test, reports and presentations. So since we know already what is this summative assessment, now let's proceed to what is really our target this afternoon, which is to know those essential elements of planning sound classroom summative assessment. So the essential elements of planning a sound classroom summative assessments are the following. First is to review the initial ideas. Example of this are the learning target, the mode, textual evidence, uh, the error, alignment, and of course the purpose. Second is um, to create a representative sample. Third, we have to create an assessment blueprint. Fourth, we have the number and the length of assessment. Fifth is to know the grade level and the last is um, the kind or the type of assessment that you are going to use or you are going to implement in your classroom setting. So as part of the essential elements of planning a sound classroom summative assessment, why do we need to consider or know first the level of our students before giving the kind of exam? So it is really important to consider first the level of our students in order for us teacher to know if the kind of assessment or test really fits under capability or really fits under thinking capabilities or their cognitive skills because for example if your student is elementary and then you are going to give an examination that is about uh, let's say for example about on continental drift theory then if you're going to give that to the elementary then that really um, that uh, that will not fit under capability right because that examination is intended for secondary level so in that there is already an error so for you as a teacher it is really important to consider first the level of your students in order to know if there uh, if there is really the coherent on giving um, the exam on their level of capability and next is why do we need to know first the kind of exam or the kind of test before giving it to your student so it is really important to know first the type or the kind of test that you are going to give or you are going to use before uh, before let them uh, before before letting them to take in order for you to know uh, if what is really your target, if if your target is their cognitive skill. So if your target is about on cognitive skill or yes, so you have to give them um, an objective type, an objective type of test. But if you are going to uh, measure the students on how far they know or on how far they understand your topic then you have to use the subjective type of test or the essay type of test in order for you to know if um, that student really understand uh, the topic that you are you have um, discussed 
So that's all for this topic, the essential elements of planning a summative classroom assessment. So I hope you understand. Thank you and God bless us all.